What is Trump's argument to, to, to say to the Supreme Court, can we just put this thing on pause? We get he would like that. Why would they rule that way? Well, it's one of the things that this is a global implications in terms of the cases that are in front of the Supreme Court. He's saying, look, if you take my immunity challenge, this could basically wipe out everything else. So we need to stop and see what's going to happen with the immunity charge in terms of my claim that I have immunity before we proceed with anything else. It's not necessarily abnormal to hear, but here's the thing that I think we should pay attention to. It tells you what he's most concerned about. The jury in D.C., he's worried about that trial moving forward because because now he's got some things that may appear to be an out with respect to a potential disqualification in Fulton County. We already know that in Mar-a-Lago, Eileen Cannon is, is sort of in his back pocket. So D.C. is the biggest concern that he has, and this is the way that he's going to try to slow it down. It's not a surprising legal maneuver to see, but I don't know if it's going to be successful. But does it feel legal or political, Susan? Because the argument Trump's lawyers are making is that it would disrupt his ability to campaign. Well, that's exactly right. Remember, the overall argument here is that Donald Trump essentially is above the law, that our presidents are not subject to any kind of prosecution, even after they're no longer in office. It's such a sweeping uh, assertion of presidential immunity. And it's a very important case for that reason, in some ways more important than the, uh, the case that was heard last week on the 14th Amendment and whether uh, Trump can be back on the ballot in Colorado and Maine, the two states that have struck him off the ballot, in the sense that this is setting a, a very potentially big precedent for that would apply to to all presidents and describe the reach of presidential powers. Look, we know Donald Trump's technique here because it's been his technique as a businessman. It's been his technique as a politician. Delay, delay, delay. Use the courts as an instrument and an arm and a part of his political playbook. Luke, if you are running for president or Congress or anything, and you were facing serious charges, legal charges, criminal and civil, wouldn't one want to clear their name for voters rather than delay, delay, delay? How do, how do the president's allies, how do voters look at this as he's saying, I would rather delay this than have my name cleared before the American people? Uh, right, well, I mean, President Trump and his legal team, former President Trump and his legal team, believe the best way for him to get out of these charges, at least the federal ones, is to take the reins again of the Justice Department and, and then order them to drop the cases. And so what that, the message that that sends to me, and I think to anybody who looks at this with an objective eye, is that he's actually very concerned about the outcome of these cases, that he doesn't think that he would necessarily prevail at trial, that he thinks these juries, once they hear the evidence, might in fact, uh, might in fact um, convict him. So, but look, trying to get that argument out to Trump's voters, to Republican voters, uh, that's going to that that that's not going to be a winning argument to most of them. They have become convinced because of what he tells them that he is being railroaded, and so he will continue to tell them that, and they'll continue to believe it despite whatever evidence comes out at trial. New topic, Charles. The judge down in Georgia, the the Georgia election case, will hold a hearing into the relationship between Fawny Willis and the prosecutor on her team, who she may have had a personal relationship with. The judge has suggested that she might need to be disqualified from the case. What would that mean if it happens? Well, it depends on who's put in her place. That new prosecutor could move forward with respect to the investigation. Who the picks the prosecutor? That's going to be a matter of the judge in that case. Yeah, the judge would be able to pick the prosecutor. Or if Fonnie Willis ultimately said up front, I'm going to step down, she would then have the authority to put someone in her place. But if she was disqual if he was disqual if he disqualifies her, then he's going to be able to decide who that prosecutor is. She may have input or may be able to make suggestions, but in the ultimately he's going to make that decision. This is a very big issue because for a very long time, this was the case that Donald Trump had to be most concerned about, and here's why. You become president, you get a new AG, mar a goes away, D.C. goes away. But you can't do anything about Georgia. He couldn't do anything about Georgia. And now we're in a situation where it could be 
that there's a new prosecutor who's appointed and they decide, I don't want to go forward. I don't think that's likely, but it is possible. And I think that that's one of the things that people have to understand. I'm not trying to sound any, any alarms here, but what I am saying is that when you switch prosecutors and Fonnie Willis is the person who was in charge of the investigation, in charge of the prosecution thus far, and now you have a new special prosecutor who's appointed to this case, you don't know what they're going to do. So it wouldn't just be someone on her team, not the person who she's had this personal... It wouldn't just be somebody who already was well-versed. It would be a new person, and so it would likely take potentially months for them to get up to speed? That depends. If she steps down, she would likely be able to appoint someone. But if she's removed, mm. then what the scenario you just described is exactly what could happen. Susan, Donald Trump reportedly plans to be in that Georgia courtroom on Thursday. This thing is likely to become a circus. How much is this about the court of public opinion? And in the court of public opinion, how bad is this for Fonnie Willis? Circus, that's the word that we always circle back to, isn't it, Steph? It's, uh, it's really remarkable uh, that this is what we're doing and what would otherwise be the heat of a primary contest. And Donald Trump is the favorite for the Republican nomination, but he hasn't yet finalized it. And instead, he's going from courtroom to courtroom, courthouse steps, weighing in and, you know, seeking again and again and again, always looking to create a distraction, always looking to have the other person be at issue, not his own conduct, not the question of what he himself did or what he's putting the country through right now. I really, I am struck by that. Uh, you know, at a moment in time, you you raise the issue of aid for Ukraine. There's the war in the Middle East. And here we are talking about, you know, uh, essentially a circus uh, once again. And it seems to follow Donald Trump uh, wherever he goes in politics. It's really, it's quite something that this is what the American public uh, is talking about and being forced to consider is which of his court cases is Donald Trump going to show up to this week, right? Well, it sounds like he's going to be excited to head to Georgia. Luke, new topic. Donald Trump has also been pushing GOP senators to drop the foreign aid bill, which would help Ukraine. Why does this make sense? With the exception of serving Vladimir Putin, someone who Donald Trump is a great big fan of, why would this work, especially for the GOP? Because it's certainly not about protecting our borders versus Ukraine. They're all interconnected. And Donald Trump is trying to create a narrative making that, that not the case. Right. And he has convinced a majority of Senate Republicans uh, to go along with him. Now, there's still about 17 or 18 Senate Republicans who are willing to stand with Ukraine, stand with Israel, stand with Taiwan and send send uh, American aid to help uh, to help those countries. Um, but uh, but you're right. Donald Trump has, has now had has wide sway over the vast majority of Republicans. So this may well get out of the Senate. There may well be aid on the way to Ukraine, but it's going to run into even more trouble in the House. And the Donald Trump has even more influence in the House. There's, there's many more Republicans who line up with him. And we'll see if there's a small number of Republicans in the House who are willing to partner with Democrats to somehow pass this through both chambers. And I was just talking with um, Abigail Spamberger a couple hours ago, who had just been on a bipartisan uh, trip to Ukraine and met with Zelensky. And a couple of the House Republican uh, House Republicans had assured Zelensky in person that they would pass this through the House by whatever means they could, even if they have to go around their own speaker. So there are still some some Republicans left fighting for Ukraine, but they're fewer and fewer. But how much harder is that getting? Not just uh, Republicans fighting for Ukraine. Look at the Mayorkas vote last week. What was there? Three Republicans who voted not to impeach him, and already one of them, we just learned over the weekend, is facing a primary challenger. Luke? Yeah, I mean, look, you know, and if... Uh, <laughs> Right. Only three Republicans are willing to stand up against the Mayorkas impeachment. There's probably going to be three again tomorrow night when this comes up again. Steve Scalise is battling cancer, is still going, is going to come back to cast the winning vote for the Republicans. And they're rushing this vote because they know uh, 
that a Democrat could win in New York and give the Democrats one more vote. So they're going full speed ahead to impeach Alejandro Mayorkas. And they, they acknowledge they don't have evidence of high crimes or misdemeanors. And this is going nowhere in the Senate. So it's, I mean, I don't, this is what the Republican House is up to right now. They're doing this instead of passing a border bill, instead of passing uh, aid to Ukraine. But these are the priorities now of the House Republicans.